Dear students, in previous sessions we discussed respiration partly, we discussed role of oxygen and also in light of photosynthesis, we have discussed fermentation. We know for aerobic respiration we need oxygen and there are certain more things to know about aerobic respiration. In this kind of respiration, there are certain steps which are very important. First thing, there is complete oxidation of pyruvate or pyruvic acid. You remember that in glycolysis, the glucose was converted to pyruvic acid through glycolysis or glycolytic steps. Also, you remember that the food which plant synthesizes may be in the form of carbohydrate that is acted upon by oxygen of respiration converted to glucose and that this glucose enters glycolysis and pyruvic acid is formed. Now what is happening to this pyruvate we want to learn in the aerobic respiration. So the first step was formation of pyruvate and second step is synthesis of ATP. We had been discussing about ATP already. Now first step takes place in the matrix of mitochondria whereas second step takes place in the inner membrane. I think you remember the mitochondria has double membrane structure, outer membrane and the inner membrane and there is a matrix. So children, you know that oxygen which is taken by plants for respiration, it is doing the respiratory role in the plants. Now how it is performing it, there are many steps to understand. You have understood the process of glycolysis where pyruvic acid was formed and now this pyruvate will undergo more steps to produce ATP. In the mitochondria there are two membranes the outer and the inner and there is a matrix. The first step takes place in the matrix and that is complete oxidation of pyruvate. Pyruvate means pyruvic acid the end product of glycolysis. And second important step that is synthesis of ATP will take place in the inner membrane of mitochondria. Now we are going to understand what is the fate of this pyruvate which was formed by glycolysis. I think you already remember that first oxygen was taken in, then it acted upon the food which was prepared by plant through photosynthesis, then it acted on glucose and converted it to pyruvic acid or pyruvate by the process of glycolysis. This much you already know, we go ahead with pyruvic acid now. This pyruvic acid is now going to enter in the cycle which we call tricarboxylic acid cycle or TCA cycle or Krebs cycle after the name of the scientist who discovered it. So this pyruvate will enter Krebs cycle and go through several steps and produce certain things. This is tricarboxylic acid cycle. It is starting with acetyl-CoA from where this acetyl-CoA came. The pyruvic acid when it breaks further it gives more carbon dioxide and acetyl-CoA and this acetyl-CoA will now enter carboxylic acid cycle or tricarboxylic acid cycle. Now acetyl-CoA when it goes further the first step it is converted to oxaloacetic acid or oxaloacetate. It is a long cycle but it is cyclical so it goes on. Now this oxaloacetic acid or oxaloacetate is further decomposed to malate or malic acid. Now this malic acid is further acted upon and do not forget many enzymes and coenzymes are present throughout the cyclic history. So malate or malic acid is converted to fumarate or fumic acid which is converted to succinic acid or succinate. Now succinate 
undergoes more reactions and gives succinyl CoA. And this succinyl CoA will give ketoglutarate or ketoglutaric acid, which will give isolitrate and finally, it makes citric acid or citrate, which again enters into acetyl CoA producing ATP. You can see production of ATP here. So, children, if you remember, in the process of glycolysis also we produced some ATP and some ATP is produced here also. What is the purpose of doing this? If I remind you, after photosynthesis, the food was undergoing glycolysis in the presence of oxygen and produced a few molecules of ATP and end product was acetyl-CoA. Now, acetyl-CoA entered tricarboxylic acid cycle and it produced more ATPs and this cycle will go on. The purpose is that ATP is produced stepwise. It is not produced in one go and when it is produced stepwise, it remains in the body for quite some time, body of the plant in this case and is utilized by the plant body as and when required for various purposes, various reasons in the plant. So far, we have not discussed why did we need oxygen for respiration and what ATP is doing. We know that we need oxygen for production of ATP. So many important steps are there for the production of ATP and production of carbon dioxide because it is respiration. But why do we need oxygen in this case? That is answered by another cycle. So, we have to know why do we need oxygen for respiration? Of course, we have understood the role of respiration and the need, but where in the process exactly it is required and how it is helping the body of the plant? That is what we want to know and answer for this comes from ETS, the electron transport system. As you can see in this system, the oxygen is used at many points and that is how the total transport system works. If oxygen is not there, the transport system will not work and any changes, any, any cycle cannot take place. In this particular slide, you can see the coenzyme O reductase is used at one point, it needs oxygen. Then coenzyme OH, cytochrome reductase is used at another place, they also need oxygen it can take place only in the presence of oxygen and similarly cytochrome C oxidase this also requires oxygen. So, if these steps require oxygen definitely they will not take place without oxygen and if oxygen is not available if one step gets missing because non availability of oxygen the next step cannot come and if next step cannot come then cycle is broken. Cycle means it should continue cycling, it should go on and on in a cyclic manner and if this cycle breaks at one point, the next step does not come and cycle can never be completed. So, that is the main role of oxygen. Of course, whatever it is converting into whatever, that finally gives out carbon dioxide and ATP, but main point is the action in between the step cannot take place in the absence of oxygen at certain points. So, the answer really for this that why plant needs oxygen after all comes from electron transport system. The electron transport system is not possible without oxygen and whatever else is happening in respiration that is happening because ETS is happening. The next step here is amphibolic pathway which is another important pathway in the plant kingdom. It starts with two molecules of pyruvic acid. You all know what pyruvate is, what pyruvic acid is and how it was produced in the plant. Now, this pyruvic acid undergoes further steps giving out carbon dioxide which you can see on this slide and NADH2. Both the things are very important. 
and then it will give rise to acetyl S CoA. You have heard about acetyl CoA in the previous session. So, it is acetyl S CoA which is produced from pyruvic acid in amphibolic pathway. Now, here after this step there are two ways it can go about. One it forms the citric acid and this citric acid finally gives rise to isocitric acid and isocitric acid when it is giving rise to keto glutaric acid it is giving out as a side product two molecules of carbon dioxide and two molecules of NADH2 and we require both the things for certain other cycles. So, we are discussing amphibolic pathway and we have reached up to the formation of 2 alpha ketoglutaric acid and now it will make another point and at that point it will give out 2 carbon dioxide and NADH2 and please remember we need both the things and it will give rise to succinic acid or succinyl S-CoA again two molecules. Now, this the next step which is coming is very important which will finally give rise to succinic acid from succinyl CoA and in the process it will give out two molecules of ATP, two molecules of ADP to ATP conversion and COA. Please remember that ADP at this point is converted to ATP. Perhaps you remember children, I told you that ATP is produced after oxidation takes place, after oxygen acts on carbohydrate, the ATP molecule is formed and when we use it as energy currency and when it is utilized to provide us energy, it is reduced to ADP and this ADP is in our body which again is converted to ATP in the presence of oxygen and again we use it and again it is converted to ADP. So, ADP to ATP is equally important and this is a step where it is taking place. So, when succinyl S-CoA is converted to succinic acid at that point 2 ADP is converted to ATP which we wanted as energy currency and also as a side product one CoA, COA is given out. Again, we require that also. For recycling, we require all these side products. Now, the succinic acid is further converted to fumaric acid and fumaric acid will be converted to malic acid and malic acid to oxaloacetic acid and at that point, it will again give 2 NADH2, which is again required for the process. Now, this oxaloacetic acid is finally coming to acetyl S-CoA giving COA as a side product and again entering the cycle through citric acid. So, this is amphibolic pathway, but the question is why we call it amphibolic pathway. So far, we were made to understand, you were made to understand rather that respiration is a catabolic process. It is breaking down something somewhere. It breaks down uh, carbohydrates, it breaks down glucose, it breaks many other points and gives out carbon dioxide and ATP. So, we have understood that it is a breaking down process, but please children do not forget the breaking down is of course, catabolism, but there is lot of anabolism is also going on because in the process we are making so many things that is anabolic. So, in the respiration we are breaking carbohydrate, we are making ATP, we are breaking oxygen, we are making carbon dioxide. So, breaking and making or catabolic and anabolic activities both are going on together. Hence, we call it amphibolic pathway from where this word amphibolic comes the amphi. Children, you definitely know amphibia, you know frog. Why we call frog as amphibian? Because it can live in water, it can live on land, because there is transition. 
it has both the qualities. It is doing two things. It is having aquatic life, it is having terrestrial life. Similarly, respiratory process is called amphibolic. The word amphibolic came from amphibia. That it is doing two things, the catabolism and the anabolism, the breaking down and the making up. And that is why this amphibolic pathway and that is the reason I try to explain it to you. So children now we shall understand a few more things in respiration like respiratory balance sheet, respiratory quotient and a few more steps. Now respiratory balance sheet will be a sheet which will explain or will be a chart which will explain how many oxygen then how many carbon dioxide how many oxygen, then how many glucose molecules, how many glucose molecules, then how many ATPs and this will be explained by the process which you have already studied, discussed, understood the glycolytic process, the Krebs cycle, the amphibolic pathway. This will show you how many ATPs are produced against how many molecules of oxygen and how many carbon dioxide are produced at various points and this will make your respiratory balance sheet. Similarly, respiratory quotient will be the amount of carbon dioxide evolved divided by amount of oxygen taken or RQ respiratory quotient is equal to CO2 given out divided by oxygen taken. Now you can calculate or this can be calculated for different kind of food items like fats it will be different, carbohydrates it will be different and proteins it will be different because calorie values are different in different food items. One point which I would like to mention here that it is carbohydrate mainly which are used at respiratory substrates. The pure proteins and the pure fats are never used as respiratory substrate. So it is carbohydrate which is giving out ATP and which is giving out carbon dioxide. So children we have understood in this session the respiration the oxygen role, the amphibolic pathway and the production of ATP and along with this we have also touched upon respiratory balance sheet and respiratory quotient. With this we come to the end of the session. Thank you.